What's up guys? Today we're going to make a return to the wonderful world of rainwater harvesting, something that as many of you know is very near and dear to my heart because that's how I supply about 90% of my yearly water needs for my house and my garden. So I'm always looking for new ways to harvest it, collect it, store it, and utilize it. And what you see behind me is just one of those ways. This is a several year old project. This is my rainwater harvesting wildlife water setup. And I think this version is now officially the 3.0 version. I originally had started it with rain barrels, then I uh, moved it up to one IBC tote. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I expanded it to add two additional IBC totes which you may remember from a few months ago, I showed you how I paint the IBC totes. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how I expanded it, um, and then I'll go over a little bit how it works, how uh, it collects water from the rain roof, directs it down to the IBC totes, and then ultimately down to a little water trough setup that I made with a concrete mixing tub and some other things I had on hand. Uh, so anyway, let me get to how I did that. And uh, at the end, I'm gonna show you some updated wildlife uh, footage because my wife for Christmas got me a new trail cam. Uh, so I haven't had one for a few years and uh, I'll show you some pictures of deer and coyotes and all sorts of animals utilizing it. All right, well, I will admit that this is definitely not the most attractive shot. A little bit of dusty ground, cinder blocks, and some old scrap metal, but it is an important part of this project. This is the location where the original single IBC tote sat, and what I've done with the cinder blocks and scrap metal is just create a level platform that isn't going to settle over time so that I can sit all of these IBC totes right next to one another and they will all maintain the exact same level. So now you can see the IBC totes are perfectly level and lined up and now I'm going to be linking them together with the use of some quick disconnect fittings. You can see one in my left hand right now, as well as some PVC that reduces from two inches in size down to one inch in size. And the reason I am adding these to the quick disconnect fitting is so that I have the ability to remove any of these IBC totes, um, either for maintenance or replacement, um, while maintaining that the system is able to keep providing providing water to the animals. Uh, so basically it's just a redundancy. It's totally not necessary, but I just wanted to have that option. And for an extra 20 bucks, I figured it was worth it. And that is also why you see that I have the extra quarter turn uh, shutoff valve is for that same thing so that I can uh, remove an IBC tote and have that uh, little stub out just uh, basically be a blocked off section uh, while the other two IBC totes are operating normally. You just saw me link these IBC totes up with this PVC pipe and that will pretty much complete the supply side of this system. Now I'm going to work on the water trough side of the system which consists of a concrete mixing tub that I already have buried into the ground uh, just so I can have a bigger reservoir than the previous version of this project and a standard uh, livestock water trough float valve. It's got two little hooks so it can sit on the edge of a water trough and then the float valve, it consists of this red float and the water inlet comes through here by way of a threaded garden hose adapter. And then as the float rises with the water level, it seals off the inlet with a little rubber grommet. But instead of using a garden hose, I'm just going to be using PVC uh, because I didn't want a garden hose to come up like this and then kink as it goes back down in the ground. 
Uh, so anyway, let me install this on the water trough and then I will link the supply side of the system with this and uh, then I'll give you a little walkthrough so, uh, to answer any questions of things that you might have. Okay, well it's installed, but I wanted to point out a couple of things because this float valve is definitely not meant to be used on a concrete mixing tub. Because of the angle of the sides of the tub, I had to add a little piece of irrigation tubing right there to kind of shim it out to give it more of a vertical stance. And then a mistake I made is I made my PVC fitting where it was just a little bit too short. So you'll see I had to notch a little edge of the corner out but anyway, not such a big deal. Now I'm gonna dig a trench from there to the tanks and connect them. And there you have it, connected from the trough through the black irrigation tubing that goes through the little trench and all the way to my supply side. And if you're wondering why I use the black irrigation tubing underneath the ground, I'll show you the reason for that right now. Actually two reasons I'm using the irrigation tubing to go underground. Number one, it's flexible. My trench didn't have to be level or straight. And number two, it has this nice little fitting right here that has a built-in screen. I don't know if the camera will focus on that, but it's a little screen that will keep any sediment or uh, algae or anything that may come from the tanks. And I can just unhook that, clean it out if I ever get clogged, and it won't make it down to my float valve. Okay, well you saw the expansion of the system by way of the two IBC totes and you saw how I plumbed it together and then did the makeshift trough with the float valve and the concrete mixing tub. But you may be wondering about the rainwater harvesting component of this system. Well, that is what you see behind me. I call this a rain roof. I've done a couple of videos on it that I'll, I'll link above or in the description. Um, but essentially it is just a low to the ground structure that I added roofing onto a gutter down at the bottom portion and then I've used another concrete mixing tub to act as a reservoir uh, for the water to collect into before it eventually starts flowing down the pipe that you see in the foreground. Uh, that piping really is actually the only uh, the biggest weak point of this system because it is a bit small in diameter but I was using uh, one inch stuff I had on hand. Ideally that should probably be about two or three inch pipe but that's also pretty expensive. So yeah, it's, it's very simple. The rain just hits the roof, runs down to the gutter, collects in the uh, reservoir there, and I just have a lid on it to prevent uh, mice or anything like that from getting in and making a nest out of things and clogging up the system. It runs down the hill and then ultimately into the IBC tote, uh, which I'll show you a clip of right now. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but the reason that is so low to the ground is because this area of the property is about five feet higher than where those IBC totes are. So by way of elevation, 
this inlet is higher than the outlet so the water will flow down the hill and then up right next to the IBC tote and eventually fill up the system. Well, I think that's going to conclude the expansion update as well as the quick overview of how the system works. Hopefully it was interesting to you guys. Uh, I'm certainly interested in it because it's rainwater harvesting, it's wildlife, and it's just one of those odd projects I don't see people doing too often. So perhaps it might give you some ideas on how to water your cats and dogs or maybe you got livestock or something like that um, but anyway i think what i'm going to do is leave you guys off with a nice little montage of the wildlife that i've had coming into this uh, water hole for the past two or three weeks that i've had the camera set up i think i've uh, captured a pretty good diverse range of animals uh, unfortunately though I did not capture the bobcat that I know lives around in this area because I see their prints on our trail from time to time but uh, I guess they are just too elusive and footage of them we'll just have to wait for the next update uh, to the next time I do something to this system but before I do uh, go to that montage I do want to answer a quick question uh, that I receive from time to time regarding this water hole and that is from people asking if I hunt the animals while they are drinking from this water hole and the answer is no I have zero desire to uh, hunt an animal that is drinking from this water hole or eating from a feeder especially one that I might have set up uh, this is purely here for their benefit I do hunt but when I do hunt I prefer to hunt in the back country with my recurve bow where it's much more of a level playing field for the animals and uh, that's just uh, my thoughts on that. I'm not against uh, somebody who prefers to hunt in another way or someone who prefers not to hunt and, and they are a vegan or vegetarian totally respect that as well so if you like this uh give it a thumbs up if you want to see similar content uh hit subscribe and uh we will see you guys next time
good. <laughs>